All right, I think we are live. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome back to this little stream thingy that I'm doing. Uh, let me just set up the comments real quick. No. Looks like we have some latency again. It should be low latency. All right. Um, Alright, so um, for anyone that might be interested in what we did last time, uh, I created a PR for CATSMTL. Uh, it ended up looking quite different from the one um, we did on stream. Um, and that is because we had an issue with, uh, because we basically created um, an implicit loop where if there's a subtype of something um, that should also be an implicit value but uh, since subtypes are um, reflexive right so a is a subtype of itself um, that means that we would get that diverging implicit expansion error that we did get hi Victor thanks for tuning in um, lovely to see you or to read you. <laughs> um, yeah, so what I did instead is basically just add a variance annotation to um, our little uh, e parameter and ask. And the same for something like raise, right? Uh, not the same, obviously, but the opposite. Uh, it's contravariant. Right, because uh, we give it an E or an E. Uh, yeah. And the same for tell, basically. Yeah, and that allows us to do, to write things like this, where um, if we have some method that asks for a foo, uh, and foo is uh, some kind of silk trait. Um, and in another function we ask for a bar, we can just uh, call the one from the other. Um, and same goes for something like, this should be raise right here, and um, tell. Well, not the same, but again, you, you get it. Um, yeah, so that's what we did last time. Um, yeah, for those that haven't seen it last time, uh, sorry about that, basically. But um, what we're going to tackle today is to add parallel variants for traverse filter. Um, and yeah, let's jump right into it. I have cats open right here. Um, I even <laughs> managed to check out uh, the master branch and have it uh, index in metals, even though, okay, it's, st it's still doing it, but um, yeah. So what we should do to begin is to have a look at our parallel type class. Um, and for those that don't know, it, so parallel basically has um, some type constructor M here, um, but also a type member F right here. Um, and these are basically isomorphic, right? So you can go from one to the other. They have the same structure, but um, they have different uh, applicative instances. So one can form a monad, um, the M type and the F type can only form an applicable, or maybe not only, but has some kind of different effect that only, or usually only works for um, for an applicative, because monad basically means you can't do things independently of each other, so you can't do things, for example, with something like I.O., you can't do um, an I.O., you can't run I.O.s in parallel uh, with just monad, with just flat map, uh, you need some kind of extra combinator. And this parallel type class basically just encapsulates that. Um, and if that doesn't make sense to you, I could probably explain it 
in a longer fashion. Um, but yeah, I think that's mostly what this is. Um, and here we can see we have these par traverse and par sequence function um, that are basically exactly like traverse and um, and uh, sequence, except that they um, instead of just using any applicative, they use this parallel. Um, and that makes it really nice to, for example, if you have a list of IOs, you can call par sequence on it, and that will run all those lists, uh, all those IOs in parallel. Whereas if you just call sequence, it would run them, well, in sequence. <laughs> Which is a bit odd now that I think about it, par sequence. Um, it's a funny little name. But we also have things like par flat traverse, par flat sequence, uh, and like all, a lot of different, um, oh, uh, different combinators of this kind. Um, but what we're missing are the filter ones. Oh, I didn't know we had this. Fascinating. Um, yeah. So what we should probably do here is something like actually let's check out first because these these functions here on the companion object um they're well they're obviously useful that's not how most things use them most thing most people most things not that's not how most people use them most people use uh some kind of infix syntax that we have defined and so i would expect that to be somewhere Hmm, um, so it's probably in here, unless it's defined, yeah, I would think it is here, but actually before we do that, um, let's just write them out here, and then we can have the syntax function just delegate to this one, um, but maybe we should have a look at traverse filter before we do anything else, um. So traverse filter is very similar to traverse, right? Um, we again have an f of a, which must have some kind of traverse instance, traverse filter instance. And we have a function from a to some g, where g has to be an applicative. Um, but instead, instead of going from a to g of b, we go to a, a we go from a to g of option of b. And uh, basically, this allows us to filter out uh, anything that is undesirable. So in this example, um, we have a map um, of into string and a list one two three four, um, and a function that takes an integer and uh, returns an eval of option of string, and then we basically run this um, this uh, this traverse filter right here and for any of those numbers that don't have a corresponding item in this map uh, it will return none right since get returns none for those um, and um, yeah and so basically what we get at the end is an eval of list of string which returns list one and three which are these strings right here right um, yeah, and that's that's basically it. Uh, it's just filtering something while also traver using the traverse function at the same time. Um, yeah, now instead of using just a random applicative, we want to do that for parallel. So let's go ahead and try. Do a def par traverse filter and we'll use some kind of type constructor t which has to have a traverse filter instance and we'll need some kind of m which is a monad um i wonder where we did this though maybe we should probably align this a little um and then we both need an a and a b because we want to go from a type a to a type b and we'll start with just a simple t of a and a function from a to uh, m of option 
of b. And we will need an implicit p parallel of m. And also, I will call this t, which is a traverse of t. There we go. And at the end, we will return an m of t of b. Right? And this is all very abstract. Um, so if there's something where you're like, oh, what, what is this guy doing? Uh, yeah, please reach out and chat, and I'll be glad to add some more explanations. Um, yeah, I think this this um, implementation should be relatively straightforward. Um, we should just be able to grab the applicative from out of this thing, right? P dot applicative, um, and if we see it has, it is for type F, right? Which is defined right here. Um, no, oh, how do we get here? Yeah, this is where I want to be. Though. No, it's not. Oops. Um, yeah. So this is for some type. Um, this is basically something like this. We have an applicative for p dot f. Right. So this should compile. Yeah. Um, and in the end, we want to somehow get to an m of t of b. Um, and what we can do here is we can just instead of usually what we do is we pass these applicatives implicitly um, but we can also do this explicitly if we want so what we'll do is we'll use this t instance we will call uh, traverse filter oh wow I used the traverse here there traverse filter um, and it wants us to give us a t of a which we can do and we will use this with, we'll just write out the type parameters, even though we probably don't need them. Um, so our g in this case is going to be p.f, right? So this is like a dependent type kind of thing. And then a and b are just a and b. Um, and to do that, we need a function now from a to p.f option of b. But we don't have that. We only have a function from a to m of option of b. But fortunately, um, let's just write this out. Fortunately, what we can do is we can just call this function and then um, use p dot parallel, which is, as you can see here, uh, the squiggly arrow is a function k or a natural transformation. Um, and it basically says that it doesn't matter uh, what's inside a given type constructor, I will transform it from one to the other, right? So basically, if you function k right here, you have some type constructor f, some type constructor g, and for any a, I can transform an f of a into a g of a. So a could be literally anything. Um, yeah, so, and now what it's saying is it can't find an instance of applicative for p dot f, so what we'll do here is we'll just say p dot applicative, and then we can get rid of this too. Um, and now this, if we look at the type here, should be uh, well, will it give us a type here? Maybe not really. Okay, this is a p dot f of t of b, which is very close, but we have to go back. Uh, from p of f to m. So what we'll do is we'll call p sequential on this. Um, for consistency, let's just do it like whoever did this before us. Uh, and this is an f of t of b. Well, you can also add the type annotation, because why not? And then we'll just return P dot sequential, which is again a natural transformation or a function k, um, and that should be it. Easy peasy. All right, so let's I guess do the same thing. Just copy and paste thing eh, for parse sequence filter, which I believe is a thing on traverse filter, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it is. Okay. 
cool. Would this make sense too? A filter A. Or maybe a traverse either. Should we port all of these? That's always the question. Um, but yeah, I think like uh, whenever we add a traverse, we should also add a, add a sequence. That just seems like good behavior. Um, and in this case, we have a T of M of option of A, which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, we don't pass any function. And we don't need this B parameter. And of course, in the end, we only return empty of A. And instead of calling traverse filter, we'll call sequence filter. Actually, we might still have to do that because we have to still um, still apply this p.parallel. So we'll probably do something like this. Apply. And still, I feel like that should be fine, right? So we're traversing, uh, this is A as well. We're traversing, um, not, not found type B, well, this might just be metals lagging behind. Um, but yeah, we're basically traversing. We're passing a function that goes from an A to a G of B. Um, and in this case, our A is the inner type right here, which is an M of option of A. Um, and our G is, again, P dot F. So what we do is we just uh, go from an M of option of A to a p dot f of option of a um and pass the applicative should probably rename this guy i don't know what, um oh yeah so this is an option of a so this is kind of what we're where we at right no um uh, this is not uh, da, 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 required m of option of a to p dot f option of a. Is that not what we're doing though? That seems like exactly what we're doing. Found. Maybe we need to do something like this. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Scala, sometimes it's weird. <laughs> Okay, but that should pretty much do it. Um, just add some very rudimentary Scala doc without all this stuff. Um, we'll just do it like like traverse filter. I don't know why this A is here. That's probably not probably not. I don't know. Let's just do it like, like traverse fill. I don't know what the A is there supposed to mean. Let's just do a traverse filter dot or like the hashtag kind of thing dot traverse filter. But but uses the applicative. This is like really not great documentation, but. Um, for anyone that sees this, like part reverse filter in the wild, and they're like, what the hell is going on? This might just help them a little bit. I'm just copying this. Yeah, so might as well. Um, traverse filter, sequence filter, but easy. Yeah. All right, so. I'm just gonna do like a. There should be like parallel syntax. Oh, is that not a thing? Damn. So, how do the syntax work for parallel? Should be something like this somewhere. I'd be very surprised. Yeah, so we have 
this right here, parallel syntax. Why did I? Oh, because it's in parallel.scala. All right. Um, cool, cool, cool. So, is this binary compatible? We dropped to 11, so it should be. Right? Yeah. I feel pretty good about this. Um, so we'll just have to add a whole new trait here, I think. Wow, we have a lot of these. All right. Um, God damn, we even have them for byte reverse. Wow. Didn't know that. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll just start with something like... Yeah, let's just start with something like this. Parallel, troopers, filters, syntax. And um, syntax. So this long name is basically just, we use uh, some kind of naming convention for all our implicit values because if you happen to have any two implicit values in your in implicit scope that are by chance named the same way they will always conflict and at least in Scala 211 and 12 I mean I'm not sure about 12 but at least in Scala 211 the error message you got was basically negative one information it was just really like oh yeah we can't find your implicit and you were like what why it's right there um, but yeah so this is why we give them really long names. Cat syntax parallel. No, traverse filter is what we want here. Um, and it needs some kind of T, which is traverse filter and an A. And then we have a T of A. And this will it will use some kind of ops thing, um, which are defined, I assume, somewhere down here. So we'll just use one of these. Final um, class, parallel, traverse, filter, ops. And at this point, we're just doing a bunch of boilerplate. Um, this needs to be private because otherwise, can call it um, extend any val so that just doesn't get allocated on the stack. Um, call this thing Bartrose filter and take some kind of M, which is parallel, parallel, and some kind of B, a function from A to M of option of B. And then, oh, that's interesting. They use the implicit here, but also here. Why would it go twice, though? Um, is there a difference depending on where I define it? Does anyone know? Oh, I think doesn't really matter. Good thing everything here goes through code review eventually. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna do it like they do. Whoever they is. Who touched this last? Two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Traverse filter T. And yeah, that's basically it. Since we're already doing this on here. Yeah, that should be fine. MT of B, and here we just call parallel, parallel dot R traverse filter using TA and F. All right, that was easy, so let's just keep them coming. Do the same thing. 
parallel sequence filter ups. And in this case, we have some kind of M here as well, right? And another A, this is a private bell, TMA, which is a T of M. Oh, actually, no, we need a T of M optional A. So let's call this Timoa. Does anyone find that funny? It's so weird, not like I'm talking to 18 people right now, apparently. Um, but <laughs> I don't see anyone and I don't hear anyone, so I don't know if I'm funny or not. Like, and that's a problem for me, you know. Like, I, I want to get feedback, but if no one's typing in chat, I'll just take that feedback that I'm not funny. Um, and that's okay too, you know. So, here, what we need is some kind of implicit p parallel m and a traverse filter uh, not the traverse filter syntax of t and we will return an m of t of a and then we'll just use the companion object again to call uh, parse sequence filter with Tomoa. Cool. Uh, let's move on to SBT. So I'd like to have some kind of tests for this. Um, but it's not really an option. Oh wow. T of M of option of A. This should be. There we go. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just use like like some of those doc tests um, that we see on on this traverse filter kind of thing. Um, yeah, so let's just try doing one of these just to see that even though I'm like ninety nine percent sure everything should be fine um it's still uh, i guess a uh, one percent chance it's probably higher that i implemented i like the the thing with uh functions like these that are so abstract where you don't have any specific thing like you have a t of m i guess option is a specific data type but apart from that you have a t an m and an a like the type system pretty much prevents you from doing the wrong thing here like um so i'll add a doc test just i you know to get to because it's a thing to do um and it's a nice example for anyone that um that doesn't know about this function to see how it works but uh in in its actual what we're actually testing, I think it, the value is fairly low. Like, not zero, but fairly low. Um, all right, so for T, I am going to use something like list. And for M, I'm going to use either. Uh, so the parallel instance for either basically just um, delegates to validate it. So it does error accumulation, um, which is really neat. Because you can basically say, oh, if I want to um, traverse the list with either and get short circuiting, I'll use traverse. And if I want error accumulation, I'll use part traverse, or in this case, part traverse filter and part sequence filter. So, what is the syntax here? Yeah, I think it's something like this. It's kind of like a REPL thing. Um, let me just double check this. Yeah. So, we'll need to do this, definitely. Um, and what we'll want to do then is basically, I guess, let's start with uh, some kind of list of either of option. Well, that's that's a rough type, but <laughs> it is what it is. Um, it's going to be a list of either 
and on the left hand side we'll, so we'll use something called either NEL um, which is basically just a shorthand for uh, the non-empty list actually let's use NEC uh, which is non-empty chain because it's uh, more efficient and um, so let's just make sure everything compiles while we do this I know it's, it's slow that's interesting oh yeah okay so we weren't done yet <laughs> um, so this is a parallel parallel um, traverse filter ops of T and A and it's just going to be new parallel to those filter ops parallel to those filter ops T A that's this T A thing mm. to add this import it's good um yeah and then we'll create another one of these for the um sequence filter. So add another T and we have some kind of M that is parallel. of M of option of A. Now we'll return a parallel sequence filter ops of T and an A. And we'll just instantiate it right here to oh, parallel sequence filter ops T and A to MOA. Now this should compile. So just one comment in chat. Uh, is that just my phone? I feel like it should be live, but yeah, maybe you guys, guys and gals, and anything um, aren't as talkative today, which is totally fine. It's a really hot day today here in New York. Um, they lifted the curfew, which is good might have heard that they're lifting here. still doing a bunch of fireworks a of protest first time I heard it was really scary I don't know can you guys hear that maybe um, all right it's compiling a lot of stuff now so let's go back here and try to write this doc test so on the left hand side we'll just use strings as errors um, and use some kind of, oh, we need an option of int here. This is not really the best function to write a nice example for it, but it is what it is. So what we'll do is we'll have something like, so the funny thing here is we can either uh, demonstrate that it uh, accumulates errors, or we can accumulate that it filters stuff out, but you can't do both. Which, um, now I have to make a decision to which one of these I want to. I think, yeah, I'm just going to do something like this. Left, uh, non-empty, which is probably something I need to import. So I'm just going to do something like that. Parts, carts also. Uh, non empty chain dot one. Let's do something like this is some kind of error. Uh, it's going to be really not the most um, not the most useful of examples, but I don't know, something like this. And then if we run list dot 
um, R sequence filter, we should get a, uh, a zero. I think it should work like this. We're going to get an either NEC of string, right? And on the other side, we'll have a list of ints, which we won't see because we only have lefts here. Um, and this then should be a left of non empty. Oh, I have to change non empty chain of error and warning, exclamation point. All right, so I can run this test like this. Hmm, let's see. Let's see what's happening. All right. Uh, parse sequence filter. Oh yeah, yeah. So we defined uh, this nice new trait, but we didn't add it to anything. So what we need to do is add this to wherever. The other stuff in so I assume is somewhere. Mm. Yeah. So we'll just do use parallel traverse filter ops. Yes. That should be all. And then we also need to do the same thing for all syntax. So oh, is this something we need to do? Yeah, so I'll just put it in here, I think, unless we had a release in sense, but I don't think we did. Uh, we'll find out once we get a uh, meme on Oh, I now see a bunch of comments that I did not see before. All right. Um, wow, they just all popped up. Okay, uh, I don't understand why class is final and why extends any val explicitly. Oh shit, I don't have the context for that anymore. I'm so sorry. Uh, just listening, you're good at narrating. Since anval is just a performance hack, we assess things. It's raining here in Wales. Yeah, we can hear it. Okay. Um, is there something in the cats build that checks the examples by running them? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think we're using SBT doc test. Um, and that is exactly what this does, right? SPT doc test type equal. It just checks that the last line you have there is the same. Um, all right, like one thing at a time here. Uh, parallel traverse filter syntax. So now at least this should do something. Um, too many arguments too for method apply in object left. Okay. So if we go back to this, um, I think I just forgot the, to close the parentheses here. Oh, I can't see. All right, let's try this. You should get Lucas second mind so it doesn't have to see the comment in ways. Like I, I can see the comment on my phone, but for some reason they weren't showing up. Um, like it, it was only showing that one comment by Victor at the very beginning. But yeah. Um, Parallel, ooh, what's this? Um, oh, this was just the wrong stuff. Syntax, there we go. Oh, oh traverse filter, my god, okay. Now we should be good. But yeah, if you want to get me a second monitor, like, and send it to me, I'd, I'd be down. Even though my desk is just too small. Or I guess I'd have to clean up. I just. Yeah, I moved in here March 1st into this apartment, and um, I w really wanted to go to Ikea, like, sometime into March, but that just hasn't been, it's not been possible at all, for obvious reasons. Um, Alright, so we have some different errors here, where are they though, I can't. by traverse foldable, validated, validated, semi group K, blah, blah, blah. Where's the red? Uh, ooh, did I miss? Okay, okay. Uh, left chain, yeah, this is what I expected. Um, oh, so they we don't need those here. 
And the weird thing about this is that even though this is a non-empty chain, its two-string method will always return a chain because it is a new type and is therefore completely erased at runtime. Therefore, the two-string will always return the two-string of the non-new typed type. Wow, I'm not sure that was a great explanation. But uh, yeah, non-empty chain is a new type of chain. Right? So it's the same runtime representation, exact same. Um, and uh, yeah, that causes this kind of issue, this kind of issue. Okay, but if we run this, can we do this, by the way? Uh, now it should work, at least. Yes, awesome. Cool. So, so far, so good. Let's do something similar for par traverse filter. Um, instead of having this huge type here, we'll do something like have a list of ints, and then we'll have some kind of functions, some kind of function. Um, let's see, what kind of function do we want? Um, so we'll definitely take some kind of int. Uh, what could we do here? It has to return an either. So it has to return an either either uh, a, a, a list of errors or an option of something. So we kind of have like dual failure, um, right? So either the option inside the either is none or it just returns a left. So we have like dual error channels, so to speak. Um, so that's a bit interesting. How could we like? What is a real world example of this? There's probably, there probably is. It's just like coming up with this from scratch is always going to be kind of arbitrary. Um, so we might say that if we return, yeah, we might just say like, oh, we'll parse it somehow, but we also want to. Um, We also want to like filter some of them out. So I guess we'll kind of just have two functions almost. Does that make sense? All right, so we'll have like this validate function, which is really what I'm gonna call it. It takes some kind of int and returns either a list of strings or a non-empty chain of strings or an option of, I don't know, uh, an option of, let's say an option of, an option of int, why not? Okay. And what do we want to do here? We can say that, um, let's do something like if, if n is larger than 100, or return a left of uh, non empty chain dot one too large. Can we just? I wonder, I'm not sure how the, how well this works if I want to do a line break. Like, can I just do something like this? Like this? Well, I guess we'll find out. Um, if that it's not the case. We'll still want to check maybe if it's um, divisible by three. So I'll just do something like this. Then we'll return a right of sum of n. If it's not the case, we want to filter it out. Is this really something that makes sense? I do not know, but it is at least, it will at least make some sense. It's not a real world example, but it is an example. <laughs> so we'll do par. Yeah, and if anyone wants to come up with a better example, uh, definitely feel free to just, um, just do it. And 
Yeah, so we don't have any lefts here. So uh, we don't have anything larger than 100. Um, actually, let's just do something like, we'll filter anything divisible by three, right? So we want um, all the others to stay in there. And in this case, this should be a right of list of one, two, and four. And I didn't get the Boolean logic incorrectly here. Um, all right, so uh, what found? I am very confused here. Found a mutable list buffer of string and Scala check prop. That is fascinating. Uh, where the hell is that coming from? Am I going crazy here? <laughs> um, maybe some name flash. This part reverse filter. Wow. I am. Wait, can I rename this? Validate. Who? Is this something to do with that? I am really confused here. Um, nope. Does this make sense to someone here? Um, all right, let's see. Did I define this function right? Left, open, open. Uh, uh, that looks fine to me. What happens if we just don't do this? Is there something going on? Oh, okay. That line. Illegal start of simple expression. Maybe I need to do something like this. Is it just, I really don't know. Um, I don't know how these doc tests work. Um, like how, how to do something like this. Hmm. Missing closed brace assumed here. Was that the same error as before? No, it was illegal start of simple expression. All right, I guess I can just inline this. Oh, that's so long though. Oh no. There's gotta be a better way. Um, damn. I'm just gonna look up SPT doc test. Ooh, my browser is responsive. SPT doc test. Oh, so let's see. Yeah, maybe easier to spot the problem if you look at the code SBT doc test is generating. Yeah, good call. Oh yeah, yeah, I should definitely should have just done that. <laughs> Thanks, Seth. Seth. Um, so it just, all right, I still, can I do something like this? It seems like I should test dot f. But, okay, is that not what I'm doing though? Hmm. Maybe I'll try the three, the triple dots here. Um, Same thing. Well, that's annoying. Um, hmm. um, here's an example. Blah, blah. 
Maybe it's... I need to put them right there. Or maybe... No. Is this a tab character? Maybe I need to use the tab. No, but it's not a tab. Hmm. This is not a problem I expected to be having today. <laughs> um, let's just... Let's, maybe I need to... Like, no, I don't get it. Uh, are they in the exact right column? Like, I'll just copy this. Maybe, maybe that's what I need to do here. Um, let's just try that. See if that changes anything. Oh, thanks for helping me debug this. <laughs> um, let's see. Ah, there we go. Thank you. That worked. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I think I think this PR is pretty much done. Um, so that's cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I haven't even actually. We could do filter A next if we wanted to, uh, like a part par filter A, I guess. Um, so filter A is the same thing, except it kind of uses the more, the more well-known Boolean, um, instead of using an option. So it takes a function from A to G of B, which we could, yeah, like, why not? You can probably get rid of those brackets now. Good call. We should get rid of those brackets. Oh, and also we need to validate that we're actually returning the right thing here. An either neck. I have a neck. Beautiful word. Of a string and list of integers, and it should be list of one, two, and four. Let's just check this real quick. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, this is a right. Yeah, let's just. Dumb. Cool. Um, all right. Mm, so let's just check what else we have on the issues. There are 217 issues open, so there's a lot of things. Um, kind of want to do this, but I'm not sure if that's super interesting um, what I also thought was really interesting was this thing which is why I created it um, so a line is a data type that is very similar to applicative um, and it basically uh, instead of taking an f of a and an f of b and turning that into an f of tuple a and b, it returns, it turns it into an f of i or a and b, and that can be really nice for doing things like, um, like zipping two lists of different lengths, um, because you then you can return an i or, uh, so an i or is basically an inclusive or, so it can be an i or of a and i or of a b can be either an A or B or both. Um, and if you have two lists and use a line on those two lists, you get um, a an IR of, uh, yeah, you get an IR of AB, a list of IR AB. And so um, that list will either always have both, either, not always, either have both, or if the left, uh, left list was longer than um, it will turn le return left, and if the right list was longer, it will turn right at the end. Um, so I assume I should have just showed you instead of explaining. But um, yeah, so what we would need for this is a monoidal version of a line. So a line doesn't have um, an empty, it's kind of like a semi-groupal kind of thing. 
Um, but yeah, let's do let's do filter A first, and then once we're done with that, we can we can go back uh, and try that because why not? So let's do filter A. Um, this is more of the same stuff. We'll have an A, and we'll need an M as well. So now we have everything in place. This should go really fast. And the T of A, an F from A to M of Boolean. And we'll need a traverse filter instance for T, and a par parallel instance for M. And we'll return M of T of A. And we'll kind of go with the same kind of thing here. We'll just filter them all first. By using filter A, using this TA, and then a function from A. We'll call F, and then use p.parallel to turn it into a p.f, and at the end, we'll use sequential to turn that back into an M of T of A. And oh, yeah, we need to explicitly pass the primitive instance here. There we go. Um, and I guess we'll write another doc test for this, which won't work until we do all the other steps. Um, yeah, we'll use either neck again. Um, and I guess in this case, what we can do here is just very simply return um, yeah we'll just I mean this is basically just if no it doesn't really work that well with this thing but um, hmm. but actually we can do something like if if it's longer than 100 we'll return this and in the other case, we'll just do right of sum. This is actually the same function or the same functionality, um, but just a little bit shorter since we're using booleans anyway. Um, and then we'll call enter a here. And the result should be the same. And of course, this should be filter a. there for no reason yes um i'll just have to go into the syntax right here and just add and in this case we can actually reuse uh these ops here since uh we still have a t of a um, and we'll call our filter a need an m that is parallel and then F from A to M boolean. And then plus it T traverse filter. And that will give us an M of T A. Dot par, uh, par filter. Why is it not showing up? Did I give it a wrong name for some reason? I did. No one told me. <laughs> um, all right. So we have these. I think that should be it. Let's see. If it works. Sometimes I guess if something compiles by how long it takes to compile, but I think my computer is slow now because I'm streaming, so it might be off. Um, oh yeah, we're not even at the test classes yet. Uh,
All right. Um, so what I could do in the meantime is well, actually no, I'm not gonna do that yet. So what we need to do before we create a PR would be to run Scala format um, and Mima or Mima. I don't know. How do you pronounce Mima? Does anyone know? Um, Mima is the migration manager and it basically checks that you don't have any binary incompatibilities. Oh, it's taking a really long time. Mm. So yeah, I'll probably skip that. Mima. All right. So I'll always call it Mima from now. Um, but yeah, it's like a really, really useful tool for library maintainers um, because binary incompatibilities can be really nasty. Oh, I called the wrong thing. Yeah, binary incompatibilities basically mean that sometimes your code will compile fine, but will throw exceptions at runtime which is really annoying. Okay, what is going on here? Um, oh, yeah, I totally messed this up. Um, that should do it, I think. Yeah, that looks right. Perfect. All right. So I'm wondering if I should run Mima or just because it's like, yeah, why not? Mima report binary issues. I'm not sure how long it will take. Um, if it takes too long, we'll just start doing something else. So let's actually, yeah, let's have a look at this align type class that I was talking about earlier. Oh, I don't trust that. Uh, I think I to be in cats JVM. is that right well I'm not sure out of which project I need to okay this looks better it's actually doing something is the laptop cooler start running during compilation yeah yeah like I have the AC on um, which keeps my laptop fairly cool like it's definitely a lot cooler than Okay, perfect. This just worked. So now we'll do Scala form at all. Oh, can't type into my own. Can't type into my own shell here for some reason. Oh, okay. Scala form at all. Yeah, oh, you're right. It's not analyzing. Why is it not doing that? We don't have the. Wait, this is for. Wait, wait, wait. This is for Alley Cats test, Cats JVM, and Docs. But it, is it doing that for. I think that seems right. Like, it's doing it for the others. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Let's just. I don't think that's super interesting um, for onlookers. Or maybe it is. Like if if you find this really interesting and you want me to run Mima and make sure it runs fine, uh, message me or like post uh, post in the comments or whatever. Um, yeah. So a line. Uh, as I said earlier, is uh, defined by this align function that takes an f of a and an f of b, returns an f of i or a b, and is therefore like similar. If you exchange this with you know tuple two, you have 
applicative or semi gruple or whatever you want to call it. Um, and you have like a bunch of functions. So this is kind of like um, map two, right? So map, if this were again tuple two, you'd have map two. Um, I don't know if this has a, an analog in applicative, but basically it will just take those A's and combine them using a semigroup. Um, pad zip does. Oh yeah, it basically pads any like it zips the two uh, in, the, in this example case lists and adds none to any of the sides when it can't. Um, and pad zip with this the same thing, just with a map at the end basically. Zip all, what does that do? Oh yeah, zip all is the same thing, just except of padding with none it will pad with these given A's and B's, or this given A and B. All right. Um, so what we would need to do here is, so this is kind of uh, the laws for this are just like semigroup or semigroup K or semigroupal or apply or whatever are that you this align needs to be associative, right? So if you look at the align laws right here, we have associativity. I guess we have some, um, oh yeah, so basically if you call a line that gives you an IR um, and if you map this second one with some kind of G function and the first one with some kind of F function, that's the same as first calling a line and then mapping over that IR using by map with F and G. Um, that's fairly straightforward. Yeah, and associativity is the one that is, I think, the, the important one. I don't know, but maybe the important is not actually something that's defined necessarily. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so basically it has to say that the order in which you call a line doesn't matter, right? That's associativity. I and mean, in the same way, like apply has associativity or semi-group has associativity. Um, and we can kind of lift that up uh, one step further by adding um, some kind of empty element in quotation marks um, and that would give us like a um, that would give us a I, an identity law right so if you call a line on this empty uh, this empty uh, value then that becomes uh, the same as the thing you had before right so if you add like the example, right, that's usually used is adding zero to something, multiplying by one, um, something like that, right, where it just doesn't change anything. And we could do that for a line, um, and there might be some useful thing that comes out of this. I am not sure. I also don't know what we would call this. So if you have a, I would go something like, we have apply and applicative. You could go for a line and aligned, alignative. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I'm going to go with aligned. But if you have a really nice name for this thing, please post it in the comments. I'd love to know. Um, yeah, we'll just use this at tech class annotation. And um, yeah, just want to check if you where to put it. Um, aligned, which also uses some kind of F type constructor, and it extends a line. And the interesting bit here is that if you do something like this, like empty, um, which I guess for all A's, basically gives us an F of A. Um, what this really does 
is kind of replicate the exact same thing we have in monoid K, right? So monoid K, this is the exact same thing. So if one were to like um, want to reuse this, because I think for all intents and purposes, these empty methods, if you have a monoid K and an aligned, those empties should always be the same. Um, it's kind of, I want to say annoying. Maybe that's the wrong word, but it's, uh, yeah, let's just go with annoying that we can't unify these. Uh, we could like make a super class here that only has this empty, but I'm almost 99% sure that that would not be binary compatible. Can't add super traits to something and expect it to still to still be binary compatible um but that's fine like maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong about this assumption that those would all always be the same but i do wonder if we should call this empty or something else mm -hmm. but let's just call it that for now um yeah i don't think there's much else we can do here like we do some algebra compose yeah uh, so what we need to do here to get all of these all of this good stuff which is basically just the ops um, we need to run oh, it's called simulacrum scala fix there it is and um, it adds a bunch of these rules so we can just run all of these. Is there a way to run all of them at the same time? Don't know. Um, and that will generate basically the boilerplate. Uh, this used to be a macro simulacrum. Um, or yeah, we used to be, was it a compiler plugin or a macro? No, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, it must've been a macro. Um, Time projectors compile plugin, but since we can't cross compile those to Dottie easily, we changed it to a Scala fix script. Oh, I ran that for all. Okay. Oh yeah, and it doesn't add serializable doesn't do anything because align already extends serializable. Okay. Um, so we'll add the implicit not found. There we go. And we'll add all the other boilerplate like this. There we go. All right, cool, cool. So, oh, sh this changed a bunch of other things here. That is not what I wanted to do. Why did this change that thing? Oh, this is just formatting, Ugh, okay. So if I, so the Scala fix produces a different formatting than, yeah, and now we're back to no changes, which is good. <laughs> I was worried there for a second that we had something weird on master, but we don't, that's cool. All right, um, so we have this align trait. We should probably add some laws for that. Uh, yeah, how do these, okay, yeah. So, trait align laws. And we want to extend the align laws with this F. And now we basically want align identity, right? So, if we use align on something, it should become the same. Um, so what we do here is we say, given some kind of f of a, um, if you call a line on that, yeah. So given some kind of f of a, and let's just say support 
kind of thing. Um, and if I call fa dot align, which doesn't. Uh, why wouldn't this work? Oh, because I don't have something like this in Skype. Okay, cool. Aligned. Is that not what I called it? Aligned. Oh, yeah. So what we do usually is something like this. So that we get everything in cats and scope. So, and now we do the, use it with this empty. This should be the same as f of a, but obviously the type that comes out of this is going to be i or a or nothing, um, which we then kind of need to transform back. So what we do here, I guess, Actually, let's just do something like this, right? Um, and then map that where we have implicit functor for f, which is just going to be f dot functor. Um, and I think what we can do here is just say uh, merge, right? Oh, and we need a semi group for that though. Damn, that's annoying because what what do we do in the case of both? Like obviously we know that can't happen. I mean, I guess we don't really know that, but um, yeah, that's a problem I didn't foresee. Uh, I guess what we could do is just say, this should be the same. This is what this thing does. This bi-directional arrow is just uh, saying that these should be the same as fa dot map um, i or dot left. I think. Yeah. Let's see, input i or. Is that too restrictive? Does oh, why would metals put that input there? Okay, I think that makes sense. And so this is, in essence, I'll just use unit here. Um, and is equal of uh, f of i or a unit. Right. Okay, so far so good. Um, and then we would need to create an aligned test, which is a bunch of stuff. But um, let's do something a little bit more interesting. So I, the whole reason we did this is to um, oh, what did have this is to have this crosswalk data type. And crosswalk is similar to traverse, just instead of applicative, it would use our new aligned um, type class. So, like, if we were to write this out, we would have, like, crosswalk, which is probably not the greatest name. But, you know, some people in Haskell thought it was a good name. So we'd have something like a, a T, or a, which is crosswalk. And um, obviously the F is already there. And some kind of A... And B, I'm not sure. So we'd have a T of A, and then a function from A to uh, F of B. And I guess what we get out of this is an F of T of B. I think so. Yeah. And we do this by calling a line on all these individual ins uh, things and then um, putting them all together into one T, which I think makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So let's just do that. Uh, let's just try it and see what happens. This is an adventure, adventure stream. Um, 
And I'm not sure if this will ever make it into cats. Uh, I think it's cool. It's neat. It might be useful for some things. Like, it... but yeah, it's not the it's not the most common use case that you can think of. So what will we do? We do type class trait crosswalk. There's some kind of f again. Uh, and I wonder if we can. You know, traverse extends functor. I wonder if we want that here too. I'm not sure. I'll just leave it out and then. Because can we? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so, def cross walk. Hmm. Unfortunate. Some type G, which as an aligned instance, some A and some B, given an F of A, and a function from A to G of B, give us a G of F of B. And I think there is a, um, so if you're like, Put identity identity into this. There is a name for that, which I'm going to also call it sequence L, which is a horrible name. Not horrible. I don't mean to. I don't mean these people any harm. But um, yeah, I'm not. I don't like that name. Hmm. I also can't think of anything else. Like crosswalk is already out there. <laughs> um, so what do we do with this? I guess we could call it. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, let's just add the boilerplate for this stuff. Oh, that's annoying. That will happen every time. Hmm. And we do need to do this serializable. Like this. And then we'll want Scala format. Do people call it Scala format or Scala FMT? All right. Yeah, sure. Uh, see you soon, Seth. Thanks for stopping by. All right. Um, so what I'd like to do is to actually try to implement this for something like list, which is like the easiest thing. Um, so given yeah, implicit val cats, uh, and we'll have to move this at some point. We we'll call it cats instances. Well, I'll probably have some cats. No. What do we call all of these things? Um, oh, it is. It's all packaged. Okay. Cats instances cross walk for list. And it's going to be a cross walk. List. Um, I'll just implement it, I guess. So I have a little line here, um, and what I guess we could do is just do like a recursive pattern match here. Yeah, let's let's just try that. Let's see what happens. I don't know. So in the nil case. what we're going to do oh and this is interesting because the um, because with applicative we would lift an empty list into um, into the applicative right so we call uh, applicative of g dot pure list dot empty of b but I guess in this case what we do is just take the aligned g 
and return empty for this to be fascinating. Um, what's oh, it's not exhausting. Yeah, I do know. I do realize that. Um, and in this case, we have our head, what, where, where we, which we're going to call f on. So we have the f of head. Um, and that gives us a g of b, which we could then map over to get a g of this of b. Yeah, let's try that. But also we want to, yeah, let's, so we want to, we have a g of b now, and we want to call a line, or yeah, let's just do a line, f of g, I'm sorry, a line, or a line width, rather, so we have an f of, ooh, okay, and, here, we would have to recursively call the rest, I believe, right? Crosswalk tail with f. And then the function here. Um, so we need a... Uh, a function that goes from an IR of B and list B to list B, which we can easily do, right? So this is just a function that goes from, yeah, so we'll do another pattern match here. Ooh. So in the case of both, and this is a B and B's, I guess, um, we'll just do this. In the case of a left, we have just a single B, we'll do B nil. And in the case of the right, this is a B's, and we return just that. So this is just me playing type Tetris. I wonder if this, this definitely should compile. Um, Awesome. Right, so let's just import cats data IOR and then we'll just use something like IOR dot just for consistency. And this looks right to me, even though this is not stack safe, right? Because this is not tail recursive. Um, so we'd have to make this tail recursive or just implement it in a different way. Maybe like with an iterator or something. Um, but it's still cool. Like I think it demonstrates um, like working with list is usually really nice just because it's such a simple data type and you can like kind of prototype things just by pattern matching uh, and seeing seeing where the types bring us because I don't think there is I don't think there's really any other um, implementation you could do with this right so yeah that's that's pretty cool um, let's do something like for option because why not It should look very similar except for the recur recursive part. So we pattern match an option. In the none case, we just go to align j dot empty. Option of B. And in the sum case, what we'll have here a so single A that we can then call F on and that oh yeah that's just 
kind of all we can do. This is not interesting at all, this instance <laughs> for option, because, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. It's, it's like the traverse instance for option, which doesn't really use the uh, applicative instance, or at least the uh, the map to or the map and the app um, side of applicative, just because option is always, can only always have one element, so there's, there's nothing really to combine. Unlike with something like list. Um, so what we'd have to do here is like a line f, a line g, sorry, dot functor dot map this thing and see something like this. Uh, compile. Yeah. Okay. Um, fascinating. So yeah, uh, maybe you should look for those that don't really know a line we should look at some of the align um, instances that we have so we talked about the list instance which basically zips um, zips uh, lists without losing anything but for something like option and map I think it's a little bit more interesting uh, so for option for example yeah this kind of demonstrates a few things so for like um, this is also something we talked about recently with combine k eval. Um, so combine k basically says that if this thing is sum, ignore this one. Um, and if this thing is none, use this one. And app or map2 basically, right, which is a similar thing, um, basically says that if this thing is none, ignore this one but if both of them are some we can call this function on it um, and a line wherever it may be was it at the top did I miss it uh, a line or line width basically says that oh I like the only the only time I'll return none in this case is if both of these are none. Like I'll be able to salvage if one of them is some or if uh, the other one is some. And that like that gives us like a third I want to say the a third way of combining um, like these higher kind of types like option uh, where you have combine k, map to, and align which all do slightly different things. Um, yeah so in this case basically uh, two options, A, I, or B. Like, if both of them are none, this will return none. And in any other case, like, if if this is some, it will return a, a left I, or. If this is some, but this is none, it will return a right I, or. And if both of them are some, um, it will return a both. Um, which is what you'd expect. Um, but yeah, so with this crosswalk, what you could do is... Um, I guess you could crosswalk a list of options and the only way you get nothing out of it, right? So it's like traverse, but instead of short circuiting, the only thing you're doing is you're kind of uh, traversing, but um, filtering out the none case. So it's kind of like traverse filter in a way, which is also interesting. Um, but yeah, 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 so that's aligned and crosswalk. Um, it's obviously a bunch of other instances we could do, but I think I'm gonna call it a day for now. Um, I'm streaming for what, like an hour and a half, yeah, and I'm feeling a bit tired. Um, I haven't been outside in like three days, and I, it's really nice. I want to just go for like a short walk. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone so much for, for, you know, uh, watching me ramble about cats and open source and as always feel free to, um, you know, message me on Twitter or Gitter or any other platform. If you have any questions about the stream or about cats or the type level ecosystem in general, I'm always happy to, um, to help out or, you know, um, answer any questions. So 
yeah, like feel free to hit me up. Thanks, Luis, for um, for showing up, and thanks, Joseph and Tomas. Tomas, I hope that's pronounced correctly. Um, yeah, thanks a bunch, and I will see you all soon. I'll probably be streaming again. Maybe not next week, but in the next two weeks at some point. Um, yeah, awesome. Thank you guys so much. And see you soon.